Okay, so uh, this one's been the elephant in the room forever. Most people love it, some people hate it, but let's talk about, talk about it. And uh, it's the driver monitoring in the one pilot. Uh, I'll just call it DM uh, for the rest of the talk. Here are the topics I would like to cover today uh, to hopefully demystify Karma's camera-based DM uh, approach. Let's start with the basics. So what's the goal of, of DM? What are we trying to achieve with it? As we all know, Karma is uh, proud about shipping a very good like uh, level two system. And as the system is getting better and better, we need to remind people that they always need to pay attention in a, in a level two system uh, to, your, uh, to your driving surroundings. Therefore, the direct goal of the DM is to keep the driver engaged. And obviously, by using the camera only, driving now becomes more chill because the driver now doesn't, doesn't need to uh, touch the wheel every now and then uh, when the system is engaged. When we say keeping the driver engaged, it means to make sure the driver is always paying attention to the role that they should be always to uh, be ready to take over. Uh, some examples of not, being um, not paying attention includes uh, on your being on your phone, falling asleep, or, sim or even like simply by just looking at the car nestling for like too long. Now that we have the problem in mind, let's fast forward and take a quick peek at what uh, comma DM has achieved so far by looking at some uh, numbers got here. Uh, the first one is a uh, comparison plot between having DM and no DM. Uh, showing the cumulative, uh, the plot shows the cumulative distributions between, uh, of distraction durations between uh, current DM, current data, and the data we had before we ship um, open, pilot, uh, open pilot DM. The green line is from recent fleet data, and the orange line is from running the same model on the data we had before DM was shipped. Uh, both lines show when both lines show data when the own pilot is engaged only. If we zoom into that that section there, in recent data, 99.7 percent of the distracted events are less than five seconds, while in the old data, this number is 97.1.4 percent, which means DM has managed to reduce distractions more uh, distractions more than five seconds by 90 percent, which is substantial. Here's another interesting stat. So at runtime, DM is only like active when open pilot is engaged, but how about when it's not engaged? By assuming DM is always alive, we can rerun the policy and the model of line on all the logs to compare the amount of DM alerts each user will have gotten per minute, both engaged and not engaged, as shown here. So the results show that when open pilot is engaged, uh, drivers get 60% less alerts on average, on average when compared to when they're driving themselves. Thus, we can say that when engaged with open pilot, people pay 60% 60, 60 more attention in the sense that DM helps them, helps to remind people that they need to be paying attention. It's not the fact that, um, that it beeps, it's the, fact, it's the fact that you know it will beep at you if you don't pay enough attention. In a way, it's similar to like speed limits, say, it's not about, like, the, pre it's not about the consequences, it's mostly about the presence. Which brings us to this graph. To sum things up, DM basically achieved two things. One is that it reminds people when they're get, getting distracted without actually knowing being distracted. The other one, more importantly, is that it keeps people from involving in distracted behaviors in the first place. So how does, so how does everything work? We start by looking at uh, what happens in open pilot, from sleep to beeps. Um, so we have the driver, the driver facing camera that takes the picture of the driver, say here with this beautiful comma free uh, camera. And then the picture is fed into a neural network to estimate some parameters of the driver. We call these parameters uh, driver stage, which includes things like uh, whether there's a face, where's the face, where, uh, where are the eyes, are the eyes closed, where the face is looking at, stuff like that. Then we have a classical uh, state machine that takes in the driver state, uh, all these parameters of the driver, and process them in loop as new pictures comes in, uh, come in. <clears throat> it also takes into account things like the speed of the car, um, and also the, how the camera is mounted, or even like how complex is the scene 
to adjust all the things, then the system will use all these information to determine whether the driver is being dis too distracted. And if they do, an alert will be shown, you get the beeps. Um, of course, the, being, the brain of all these is the, the neural network model we use to extract uh, information from the picture. Now, now let's zoom, zoom in more and look at the model itself. Uh, in uh, like the more technical terms, the model is an uh, efficient net V0 vision network, which, which is 8-bit quantized to run on the DSP instead of the GPU, such that uh, the DM model doesn't compete, resource, compete for resource with the driving model, such that they can both, they can both have room for growth. Say we want to train big model in the future for both of them, we can do that. Um, and the two main outputs will be the driver's head pose and eye stage, which are the two cornerstones of open pilot DM. Uh, well, uh, it may not seem much, but as we shall show here, we, we, are, we shall be showing, uh, these two aspects are actually proven to be quite versatile when it comes to determining driver attention. Here are a few examples of DM model in action when I was driving. Uh, we can see that by just looking at uh, only the head and the eye, you can actually catch things from simply looking away or playing with your phone when driving or the, the even more subtle like falling asleep somehow. Um, and of course, the model works both day and night. Well, you might now wonder how the measly 8-bit model uh, can do all these tricks. As uh, George always says, the most important aspect of machine learning is, of course, the data. So, so the next talking point will be our data. Uh, the latest DM model is trained with uh, more than 23,000 hours of uh, driver videos uploaded uh, from over 1,600 unique users, unique users uh, from our feed, feed which, is, uh, which makes up roughly 20%, 25% of the total user space. Uh, thanks to them, Open Pilot DM can be as good as today. Uh, we would love to see this number, this number grow, and in the coming slides, I'm going to show what we, go, what we are doing with the data and why more people should upload. Well, some people might be worried that their faces will be looked at when we label the data and thus have concerns about privacy and stuff like that. And yes, we do, la we, we do have our diligent data labelers, but they are machines. So these beautiful computing clusters that Greg built are also our DM labelers. Uh, here I have three pictures for them because uh, we have three racks. So how are the ground truth generated? Um, so we have been building this uh, DM data annotation pipeline for almost two years now, uh, which can do the following task in a fully automated manner so that, so that no, human, no human would need to uh, look at the data, any of the data. <clears throat> Uh, here are some of the examples of the, our auto ground truthing stack uh, in action, where you can see faces being uh, detected and the pose being accurately estimated, and also uh, as well as the eyes and where, whether they're closed. So what's actually doing all these things are what we call the teacher models that we train separately uh, to work specifically on our data set uh, using a technique called transfer learning which means the knowledge of these models are obtained from somewhere else. In this case, it's the, the open source data sets. Um, so you have these open source data sets. Of course, you can naively just train some models on them, but it won't work because they look like nothing from, from our data, which brings us to the idea of uh, domain adaptation. It means that uh, we need to augment uh, these open source data sets to make them look uh, somewhat similar to our what's in our data set, then we can start training models on them. Uh, speaking of domain, domain adaptation, the idea can be also be applied to say, when we want to train, we train the model that used to work on eons, to work on comma twos, we can just make the, we can just start by making the eon pictures pink, kind of pinkish to make, mimic the IR, IR lighting in the comma two. And it's also the same trick when we want to transfer the, say, the comma two models knowledge into uh, the comma three, oh, sorry, into the comma three capable model. That's how we ship the really good uh, comma two 
<coughs> that's how we ship the that's how we make the common free uh, DM model good at launch without actually using a lot of common free data. So after all that labeling and training, now we move on to testing, which is the most integral part for us to move forward and, uh, and avoid aggression, regressions. <clears throat> so to test, you need a metric. What is a good metric for good DM experience? Is it model accuracy? Does a high model accuracy equal to a good experience? Well, not necessarily. Well, that's not true for DM at all, actually. Usually, like, 99% would be fine, but, but now you're assuming the 1% bad experience is evenly distributed among all users. Then, in this case, all users are enjoying 99% of the experience. But in DM, usually, 99% <clears throat> means 1% of the users are constantly suffering and having constant, constant false positive or something like that, where DM doesn't work for them at all. So how do we catch them? So to catch any, any of such bad, exper <coughs> bad experiences, we crunch numbers on every device in the training set and validation set. For example, here we try to see uh, how often each device will get alerts with some candidate model we want to ship. Each dot here rep represents a bit device. We can see some device get a lot of DM alerts consistently, and it's, and it's important that we understand all these um, positives. For example, if this happens on me, where the model constantly thinks I'm distracted while, while I'm not, we need to find out why. It could be because the model doesn't work well enough when wearing glasses, or is it because the policy is too strict because I squint too much into the sun or something like that? These are the questions that inspire us to write more detailed tests and fix the problems they exposed. On the right uh, is another example of testing by worst cases. According to this distribution curve, some devices are constantly failing to detect faces. Why? Is it due to the model not working in certain lighting conditions? Or maybe it's just the lens is covered? We need to, we need to figure them out. <clears throat> so by visualizing all these worst cases, we can easily identify uh, what some of the problems are and what can be fixed, either by software or hardware. Say, for example, uh, in the red ones, they're clearly covered and they're hopeless. And then in the black, uh, in the black uh, images, it's probably because the IRDs are broken and that's a hardware issue. <clears throat> so the takeaway is uh, we can learn and improve things a lot by just looking at the worst cases. All right, uh, on top of everything I've talked about so far, I would like to also add some comments about thinking DM as a machine learning pro problem in general. So we currently have data uh, uploads from about 1,600 users. And below is the amount of people who don't, who, from who we don't get data, DM data from, which is 75% 70, of all users, which means for us as a company, we are stuck with this small subset of data, of data to build a system which is expected to work on a, on a much larger user base than the training set size. Well, now all this looks like a disaster for overfitting, especially when, when we have shown that even 99% isn't good enough. In other words, the model is only guaranteed to perform well on the people who's in the training set. What's the solution then? Hmm. <clears throat> well, how about more people consider <laughs> uploading their driver camera maybe? Well, it's just an informed recommendation. Absolutely nothing more than that. All right, seriously though. Turn on, turn it on <laughs> to uh, help yourself and help others. Now, let's move on to um, what's next. Apparently, the next uh, big thing would be end to end DM, where we will move the boundary between perception and reasoning, like we did in the driving model. The DM model will have only one output called eyes on row, unlike like, in the classical model where we output like many parameters of the driver and did a lot of uh, complex math on that and figure out whether it's distracted or something. And actually, we are now actively working on getting automatic crank through working on this end-to-end uh, -end pipeline. Um, pretty exciting stuff. Also, to give the model more context, we are also considering making it temporal 
or training back models on the Common Freeze 180 model to make it see more. So yeah, there are so many potential big improvements we can make to stay ahead of the DM game. Very exciting stuff. Uh, that's it for me today. Thanks for listening. All right. How many of you are going to turn your driver monitoring toggle on? All right. All right. Here we go, Jason. Thanks. This is a lot of good info. Can you talk a little bit more? You said there were times when the DM model would kind of relax versus tighten up its requirements for paying attention. Is that more than just stopped versus not stopped right now? So in the driving model, in the driving model, it outputs uh, the probability of you like being engaged, and also the probability of you like disengage in so many seconds in the future. So we use all that information to like ad like adaptively set the threshold based on the scene complexity that the model thinks like when it will fail, so that such that the DM model can be more relaxed when say it's driving on a straight highway compared to it's like stuck in traffic. Okay, so every once in a while I see someone question, you know, I tried closing my eyes and the DM model didn't do anything, or I tried doing this or that, or I looked mm. away and it didn't detect anything. And a good explanation for that might be that it's relaxed a little bit because this is a, a simple scene with a low probability, according to the model, of the driver having to grab control. Yeah. Would that be fair? Okay. Thank you. It doesn't mean you can ever not pay attention, though. <laughs> That's right. Um, my question is more about uh, future possibilities with the comma three in the 180 degree field of view. Obviously, there was some questions about uh, a sentry mode and comma security and all these things. Do you think uh, implementing some of those features into the official release of OpenPilot may encourage, with like a prerequisite of needing to upload your driver monitoring to record these events could help uh, encourage more people to use that feature and upload it because they're getting more benefit from it when right now they may just feel that it's only a benefit for comma at, at a cost of their privacy where you could give them security at a cost of their privacy and they may consider it. Yeah, so we are considering that. Um, so actually, we are actually also considering using the comma freeze 180 like driver camera to like to extract some of the like informations for driving, which is like the offering like we can do, uh, like you mentioned. Uh, so what we can do is like if we can somehow make the users upload with that, and if they if they don't like it, they can like choose to blur out their faces, then that would be great. Quick question for you: Are you always limited to using the DSP? Uh, will the open pilot team ever give you more compute if you ask for it? And is there any difference between the um, C2's Qualcomm, I think it's an 820 or 825's DSP versus the C3's 845? Uh, the C3's is way better. <laughs> but we are only using, say, 10%, maybe 12% uh, potential on the C2. So there's a lot of room for growth. Got anything in the crowd? All right, we got someone upstairs? <laughs> no worries. I gotcha. All right. Uh, you, you mentioned transfer learning from training on some general object detection data sets with some kind of augmentation. Or are you doing like uh, self supervised pre training or could, could, could you explain that a bit more? Well, you can do augmentations like um, color, like mimicking. Or you can do like something like Fourier domain adaptation to mimic like the sharpness on a, like a finer level of the image to make them more look like uh, look more like the ones on our data set. Does that answer your question? And you aren't directly training the uh, efficient net. You're training a teacher policy. 
Yeah, we first generate the ground truth using the, the ground truth using the teacher networks on our data, and then we use our data and those labels to train the efficient net to make the model perform. Have you ever considered using a monochrome IR camera? It looks like there is some color data of maybe limited use on what we saw in the demos. Um, we are not having problems with using like RGB IR cameras, so I don't think that's a limiting factor for us so far. So given that this is an opt-in, are you currently tracking the users who show um, a high, uh, what, what's it called? The, the distraction. The really distraction level on a consistent basis, and would you ever seek action to ban those users? Is that a consequence? No. From the man himself. You heard it. That's right. Hey, so kind of a broad question. So it, it's totally understandable why you need to like work on DM and and have some way to like be able to alert the driver and even help them and perhaps even hold them accountable. Maybe that's taking it too far, but. But at the same time, you also say stuff like, and I realize it's maybe half joking, but like we're L2, we take no accountability. So I guess what do you see as the purpose of DM to the extent that what I'm saying of the company not taking any, I mean, maybe I meant to say liability instead of accountability, um, not taking liability, like what's the purpose in light of that? Mm, it's, not, it's not like a liability level, it's more like, you want the, the you want to remind the driver that the limitation of the system and what their expectation of the system should be, but and by using DM we are ensuring that concept is always present. Does that answer the question? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, since in the future you guys are going to be using the front-facing camera for the driving um, portion of the of the of the comma um, of opening a pilot, um, are you going to be doing two passes? Basically, um, process a frame of video for driver monitoring, and then uh, um, pro reprocess the frame again for the driving. Or is it going to be all mended into just one process? We'll and see. <laughs> so now we have the super combo. Maybe there's a super super combo in the future using all three cameras. Uh, hello, have you considered incentivizing users to upload their, their video as, a, as an investment in improving the overall effectiveness for everybody? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if you upload, it works better on you. So, I mean, that's the direct incentive. Common points obviously are very valuable. Um, the more you have, the more important you are. So. All right, that looks like it. Thanks.